Today we're going to be discussing strain energy for the first time. And um, <clears throat> essentially strain energy is the energy associated with uh, the development of deformations in the bar, so the, de de the development of strain. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about strain energy. And uh, so let's let's take a look at a simple scenario. We'll look at our 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 bar here. Not, not a very good drawing, but let's take a look at our bar. Axial load, and there's an elongation that occurs. Okay. We call the elongation delta. Now if we look at what's called the load displacement diagram, so load displacement load displacement diagram, sometimes called a P delta curve. So we put the load P here, we put the delta here. It may look something like this. So there's going to be kind of a linear region and then maybe it begins to deform plastically. And <clears throat> for some value of the load, let's say P, right, there's going to be some small D delta. Okay, so this calculus, that's a differential, a very small uh, increment in delta for some given load P. Okay. Now for a constant P, so if the load is constant, so for a constant P, the work done by the load P is just P times delta. Okay, so that shouldn't be a surprise, right? Force times distance equals work. So if the load P is constant, then the work done by the load on the bar is just simply P times delta. Okay. For a non-constant, for a non-constant P, then the work still is P times delta, but you have to do a different kind of summation. So you take the integral from zero to delta, where delta is the total elongation, and then you multiply P times D delta. So you're looking to add up all the little increments of delta times the force to get the work. And this here, when we say work, what we mean is external work, right? So that's the work done by the external load, P, external work. Okay. Now, we, so we've talked about work, and that should be a concept that you've seen before. Let's talk about strain energy, which is a concept that you have not probably seen before. Okay, so strain energy is defined to simply be the energy absorbed by the bar during the loading process. Okay, so uh, we'll call the strain energy, we'll use the, the letter U to denote strain energy. Okay, so strain energy is the energy absorbed by the bar during the loading process. Okay, so we have this idea of U, okay, which is strain energy, strain energy. And then we've got this idea of work. It's external work, right, which is the work done by the applied load. Okay. Now, if there is no other um, energy production, let, let's say by heating or some other mechanism, then you know that the internal strain energy, right, the energy absorbed by the bar during the loading process, must be equal to the external work done by the applied load, right? 
So this is what we would call mechanical equilibrium. So if this didn't hold, right, the bar would not be in equilibrium because the forces wouldn't be balanced. Okay, so the strain energy is very, it's kind of like internal work. So this is the external work. Strain energy is similar to like what you would consider to be like internal work where the force is the stress and the little, the distance then becomes the strains and you add them all up with an integral. So that's the idea um, here. So this comes from stress strain, like a stress strain idea. And then this comes from a force displacement idea. Okay, but they're analogs to one another, as you can see. All right, now, let's take a look at this. One nice thing about this equilibrium statement where strain energy equals the external work, the external force, is you can begin to then do simple calculations if the material follows Hooke's law. So if the P delta curve is like this, okay, we just, it just follows Hooke's law, then what do you know about the uh, strain energy? Well, the strain energy is simply going to be the area underneath the P delta curve, okay? Right, because remember, in general, in, in general, the general statement that we made was that strain energy was some integral, right? But that was only if the P delta curve wasn't a line. If it's a line, then we can just simply take the area of the triangle, okay? So if it's linear, then instead of an integral, we can just say one half P times delta, okay? All right, see, I hope you can see that this is just a simplified version of this integral up here where it's just the area underneath the curve. And this only works if this thing here is a line. That's the key point. Okay. So now, if delta is equal to PL over EA, and U is equal to P delta over two, then we can plug this delta expression in for uh, for delta, we can take this delta, plug it in to the expression for strain energy, and then we get P squared L over two EA, okay? So you can see there's a squared term here. So this, this squared term, so the strain energy is essentially uh, related to the square of the load, P. So this is no longer a linear relationship. There's not a linear relationship between U and P because of this squared term here. Okay. Another expression is we can, um, we can rewrite this to be delta EA over L equals P. Okay, so we just, this just rearranged to get here, and then we can, rather than eliminating uh, delta, we can eliminate P, right? And so now we're gonna plug this expression in for P, and we get delta squared EA over 2L. Okay, so these are the two equations of importance for strain energy. Okay, so the important concepts so far that we've learned are this idea of external force, which is the work done by the external loads, in this case P. And then we learn this idea of strain energy, which is essentially the work done by the internal forces or the stress and strain. And in, if they're in mechanical equilibrium and there's no other energy generated by any other process, then big U is equal to big W, and then you can begin to relate the strain energy to the applied loads all that we've done so far. Okay, so let's do a simple example. Okay, let's, let's say we've got a building, okay, where there's a column. So we have a column, and there's three floors.
three floors in this building, and the top floor exerts a load P1. The middle floor exerts a load P2. The bottom floor exerts a load P3. Okay, and every story has the same height, H. Okay, now what I want you to determine here is the strain energy. So determine the strain energy in the, of the column. U of the column is what we're after. Okay, now this is exactly the same thing that we did for the deformations or the elongations where you do a sum and you're going to add up the, if you remember, if you recall, we took the deformations of each story and added them up. But here we're just going to take the strain energy in each subsection of the column and add them up. So U is equal to I equal 1 to 3. N I L I two E I um, A I this should be squared, I believe. Okay, and then we're going to go through the same process with statics is of determining the internal forces n i in each of these subsections. Here's the first one, second one, and third one. Okay, and so then this just simply becomes h, right? You add up all the lengths that equals uh, h. Um, every length is h, so that factors out h over 2 e a over or times n1 plus n2 plus n3. Okay, and then I'll let you figure out through statics what n1, n2, and n3 are, where n1 is the internal force in this guy, and this is n2 in this guy, and then this is n3 in this guy. And so you can see this is just a very simple extension of what you already understand. So nothing new has happened here.